I'm a real estate guy. Mm -hmm. Like I consider myself mm -hmm. to be a real estate expert. If I had to choose between being an insurance agent and a real estate agent, I would choose insurance. How come? Because I'm convinced you actually learn more about personal finances, generational wealth. You learn more about how the market works mm -hmm. if you are in the insurance industry. Because people don't understand how much insurance affects our markets, <laughs> how much insurance affects our you know investment, capital markets, labor markets, you name it. Yeah. And again, not a knock against realtors, right? I have realtor friends that make fifty thousand dollars a year. They drive great cars, they have great careers, and I you know they do a great service. Mm -hmm. uh, but for me, if you're a real estate agent, um, you take a course, you, you get licensing, you you learn all the laws within just that industry. You don't really go beyond. And at the end of the day, your number one skills is sales. You know, you don't really go outside right. the housing market. Uh, yeah. But when you're an insurance agent, you learn so much more than just about the insurance industry because the insurance industry is so tied to so many different things. Yeah. So between me and you, like I, that's actually my personal preference. I would actually choose. I would actually agree with you on that one. You know that I would I would totally be an insurance agent over a real estate agent. An interesting thing there too is uh, there's also that that uh, cousin uh, peanut butter and, re and jelly relationship with between real yes. estate. Yeah. And I mean, right here in Chicago. Yeah. Uh, the biggest. Uh, namesake buildings, largest, high, yeah. you know, biggest building, namesake buildings in downtown Chicago are owned by yes. insurance companies. Yeah. I mean, you look at Willis Tower. I, I ask people all the time, what's Willis? What's the <laughs> biggest? No, what what does Willis do? Yeah. I don't know. Guess what they do? Yeah. They do insurance. Both of these, are, they stand the test of time. Yeah. You know, because yeah. they, they're hedged against inflation. Yeah. You know, they increase, they decrease. It's one of the, those two things are the most powerful financial instruments, I believe, in America. But yet, for some reason, mm -hmm. You know, yeah. our schools don't teach that. Of course not. We teach accumulation as opposed to cash flow. But one of the biggest myths is that you know people say that oh I need money to do real estate. Well, that's not true. I didn't have any. I didn't have any money. I had negative had dollars. For right? sure. <laughs> so what I did is I raised money, and people are always like, oh I hate raising money. I hate asking people for money. That's not the, the perspective shift for a second, yeah. right? So I'll, I'll ask you a question, Matt. Do you think there's more people in the United States that have a minimum of hundred and fifty thousand dollars that they're able to invest? Or do you think that there's people who actually know what the heck they're doing in the real estate investment game? Uh, the other side. For sure. Yeah. Absolutely. So in my observation, I, I, I choose to travel a lot. I, I came across a lot of different people. In my estimation, for every one person that actually knows what they're doing in real estate, that actually knows how to put together a business plan, build a team, hire a coach, et cetera, mm -hmm. et cetera, there's probably about 50, 50 to 100 people that have at least $150,000 in their account that they're able to invest. Yeah. So... If I have this opportunity, mm -hmm. it's a solid deal, right? What is more valuable, the opportunity or the money? Opportunity, yeah. It's the opportunity. So, for, you know, a lot, I, have, I have a student, you know, because I offer one-on-one -on -one coaching for real estate. I have a student who raised, with that mindset shift, I, I gave her the mindset shift, and I also taught her a couple of techniques that we talk about in my inner circle. And she went out, knew nothing about real estate beforehand. She raised, uh, she raised a million dollars in one week to do deals incredible yeah. you know so for me that's the mindset shift that we got to have so there's three things i call the three-legged stools of real estate okay um you got to have you got to have knowledge and guidance so always have somebody in your corner that you could refer to that you could ask always have a second pair of eyes you know always have the best books the best podcasts you know which i, I mean i got a book i wrote a book zero to 75 units in one year it's absolutely free all they got to do is just go to zero to 75 units uh, in one year.com um, again, link here. Yeah, perfect. Okay. Right. Yeah. It's, again, it's absolutely free. Uh, so knowledge and guidance. Other one is tools and resources. So understand what softwares, what are the best things for you to utilize to be able to. And then last but not least, have the people and the resources. Yeah. So have your team, your capital lined up. If you could master these three things and if you sat down, if and, and most most problems, I feel like would be solved if people simply just sat down and took half hour to just map out what they want. Yeah. If they just literally sat down for 30 minutes and, and organized their thoughts, okay, three things I need here, I need from here, 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 I'm convinced that people will do just fine.